fence for the season and it's only 19 degrees out so we are dressed in layers to keep ourselves warm. We'll see you there. Oh my. Yeah. Oh my. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a disease, that's for sure. No, it's not well, either. Well, <laughs> well, it's taken over. <laughs> Whatever it is, yeah. Now, your wife wasn't mad about the vehicles, all the buildings you had to build. Right, that's the problem, right? yeah. <laughs> Wow. That's the I really appreciate this. Oh, you well, have no thank idea. You. Thank oh, you. this is amazing. Oh, thank you. But it's a secret. <laughs> I was never here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on in, guys. File right here. Oh, my goodness. So, that vehicle, most everything in here is World War II. Okay. That's a 1944 Studebaker Weasel. And they, they thought that we were going to have to invade Sweden, Switzerland, Norway, so they wanted something that was high flotation, I guess I'd call it. So it has two 22-inch wide tracks, but it's only 66 inches wide. So it has 1.89 pounds per square inch ground pressure. So it's like an eight-pound cat. So if you take that out in two feet of snow, it sinks down about eight, nine inches. And then they discovered that, oh, it'll go good on sand, it works in swamps. This one isn't, but when they were new, they were amphibious. You get that running? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a lot of fun. Yeah, you just point that and go. Yeah. 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 That's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. So they thought that they were going to, like I say, invade snow country. So they'd take the GIs out. They had loops welded to the back of it for tow ropes. So they'd haul 15 or 20 guys on skis. And uh, when the guys got out of it, they said, oh, stop here, we have to do our whatever. They jump out and sometimes they go right to their armpits in the snow. Because it, they didn't realize how deep it was, you know. Yeah. Nice. So then this is a 1941 Dodge command car. So this was an officer's vehicle. So it's got two, it's like a camel's hump. It's got two door openings in it, two scallop door openings in it. You could buy these right after World War II, four hundred and fifty dollars. Never issued. Still had the doors wrapped up in the plastic on the seat. So the common thing to do was because, as it is, it's such a what do you do with it type of a vehicle. The the people that bought them, they would cut the body off right behind the door, throw the tail end of it away, put a cab on it. This one had a record boom on it. So, $450 back in 1945, 46, they had to have something they could make money with. It was the first four-wheel drive they'd really seen because the, when the Jeeps came out, they were the first four-wheel drive, and when they surplus them, then the civilian market got into them. But up until that point, just the GIs had seen them. So, Joe, well, that's now, a power wagon, right? Is that a... Well, it's the beginning of the power wagons, okay. yes. Yes, because power wagons started in 45. Okay. But this is... A, the grandfather to the power yep. wagon, because that truck, 
That's a 1943 command car, Dodge command car. Okay. So they lowered the profile a foot because the enemy recognized this as an officer's vehicle, and it was a nice target, so it's tall. Oh, yeah. So they lowered it a foot, shortened it about a foot, and uh, that's more like the power wagon with the frame and the, the fenders and the yep. flat hood. And, and then this is a 41 Dodge carry-all. This is a half-ton carry-all. So this would have been like a base vehicle, uh, radio vehicle, and all of the windows rolled down. Um, and it was just a civilian truck that they put flat fenders on instead of the big bulby civilian looking fender. That's all they did to it, made it four wheel drive. <laughs> and then this is uh, 1951. This is not World War II. This is Korean era, but this is a 51 M38 Jeep. So when this was new, uh, 24 volt electrical system, all waterproof ignition. I have one done over in the other building, I'll show you. But it has valves in it. There are valves in the plumbing. When you pull the handle on the dash, you can go out in the water with it because it pressurizes the master cylinder, mm -hmm. transmission transfer case, bell housing. Yep. You know, these are the ones that they were selling, you know, that you could get in crates. All well, supposedly the World War II ones, yes. Yeah, not not Korean, but the, the World War II ones, yes. Yeah. They were all packed in Cosmoline. Yep, they were packed. The, some of the guys, a couple of the guys have actually recreated that. They oh, built okay. a Jeep, then they disassembled it to a point and built a crate for it to be in. So they just cleaning all that up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yep. Yep. So then if you want to go into that next room. Okay. This is not the good stuff. <laughs> yeah, this is just a this project. Is, this is a project. <laughs> project. Yeah. 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 Right on the right there, Todd. Yep. We'll get a look at the light switch. No, right on the right just before you go. Oh, okay. Oh, you've been doing some work? <laughs> Good, you're right. Yeah, I believe that's... I'm not sure if that's a Studebaker or not. No. We were just talking about the vehicle that's missing that the gentleman didn't tell us why. Oh my god. Did she find out? No, I don't know. She ended up selling it before she oh, found out. Okay. seven years ago and wanted to know if if I found one he wanted me to tell him because he wanted to buy it and restore it he wanted me to restore it for him so he found one in Connecticut and I went down and picked it up and I brought it up here he lives in Georgia so every month I send him a bill with a CD so he could see the progress it took me about three years and the whole time I'm working on it, he says, have you figured out what we're going to tell my wife yet? Oh, no. <laughs> I no, kid, that's not me, that's you. That's you. So I got the car all done, and it sat here, for one reason or another, sat here for maybe two years. And I says, so Keith, I says, surely you've told your wife about this command car. And he goes, ah, oh, he says, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. <laughs> like, yeah, okay. <laughs> you cross that bridge. I'm not going to. Yeah. But he ended up selling it to a fellow in Pennsylvania, so it never went to Georgia. Oh, yeah. Unless she so. did, and he had to sell it. But, yeah. M38A1. So this is also Korean era. And this has the overhead valve engine in it. This flat fender would have just a four cylinder with a flat end. Four cylinder, the L here. This would have the F here. Uh, so they were building. They built both of these in '52, but they only built. They stopped in '52 on the M38. Yeah. So they had a little bit of a hole. Uh, the black Jeep is a '49 CJ2A that has just been worked over and over and over. So uh, 
I've given that to my daughter down in, they just bought a farmhouse down in Bowdoin with 153 acres. So that's going to be the farm jeep. Uh, I'll then be able to play with that. Uh, so that is a World War II, that's a 1941 white half track. With the white, yeah. And it has a box that wraps around the back end, 10 troops can sit in. And I have a floor in the other building, I'll show you. It's still all original World War II paint. That other than the orange, no marking about the original registration numbers. So I've got all the original armor for the back. Most of it's still in original olive drab paint. So I'm going to build a barn find half track. I'm not touched. That's not going to. Nothing's going to get painted. It's just going to stay as it is, but it's going to look like it's a barn fire when it's all done. It won't be a rat run. It'll be all correct and straight and yep. clean. And then that big ring leaning up against the wall in front of the half track, the right hand side of that bolts to the windshield frame, and then the ring comes all the way to the back of the half track, and that's called a skate rail. And the skate rail has a trolley on it that you put a 50 caliber machine gun in. And you, the gutter could walk all the way around the half track shooting 360 degrees. Oh, wow. Now, do you have that part? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> it's curious. Yeah, soon. <laughs> soon as I get my button, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, are these restored? Now, are these. No, this is. Somebody had restored this one probably 15 or 20 years ago. Okay. And that one, yeah, probably about the same thing. But, uh, so what percentage of they were? Oh, that one is probably 10% original. Oh, okay. Oh my god, that poor Jeep. The fenders are all homemade. Oh, the, oh, okay. the body's been wrapped. <laughs> uh, the inner wheel housings have been yep. changed, the floors. And the Jeep in the corner, that's M38. That's Korean one. That's a 52. That's still all original OD paint. So I'm going to just keep that one as it is. They're all the original ones. Yeah, you know, as nice as it is to restore, it would ruin it. Sorry, yeah. Right? But yeah, absolutely. It would never yeah. be the same. Yeah. Would never be the same. Yeah. Same half okay. gas. Okay. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Hot for all of the change of order. Oh, very nice. So yeah, it's got a big uh, a ten. I think it's a twenty thousand pound winch on the front. Because when that <laughs> is all done, it weighs eighteen thousand pounds. Wow. But it is just the coolest thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no truck rear end, because when you look at it, you can see the brake drums. And instead of bolting a rim on it, they bolted the sprockets. Yeah. That's all they did. Mm. That's all they did. A cubic inch or something, but it's only like 95 horsepower. That's yeah, huge. And what, huh. what was the engine you said? It's a white truck engine. It it's a six a cylinder. Truck. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and it's got white cast right into the... Yeah, yeah. And white still makes trucks today. I think they're tied in with Volvo, white Volvo. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? That's correct. Yeah. yeah, so it's the same white company. My first Jeep. Uh, we did this one in 83. Um, it's a slat grill. They refer to it as a slat grill because it has a steel bar grill. And they made uh, the first 25,000 Jeeps had the steel bar grill. And it also says Willis... Right on the rear panel underneath the, the gas. Like a, yeah, yeah, this would be the first series after the prototypes. So they had wow. the MA, and then when they started building the standardized Jeep, it would have been this. And, and no glove box, but still the flathead for typical, typical Jeep. So this was made by Willis Overland. Um, when we got it finished, well, before we got it finished, we started trail riding with it. And it turned into, wow, this is a lot of fun. I'm going to build something that I can use and not work on every time I come home. <laughs> so we took it apart, restored it. I found this color paint up under the dash, so I assumed that it was the correct color. And we have two girls, and Crystal was probably 10 at the time. And I said, well, girls, we got to come up with names for the Jeeps. All the Jeeps need names. World War II Jeeps, they all had names. So Crystal looks at it, she goes, you know, Dad, she says, it kind of looks like pea soup. 
<laughs> she, says, she says, I'd be really honored if you would name it Pea Soup. <laughs> okay, so how can I not name it Pea Soup, you know? So that's how Pea Soup got his name. And Crystal was the one that came with you to Pittsfield, right? Yes. With that? Yep. Yes, Crystal and Craig. Yep. Yep. So this is a Willis. Behind Todd, we can go right out there if you want. What year is that one? 40, this is the 42. This 42. Is, this is... January 19th, I think, of 42. Yeah, I know there's a specific date on one of and them. And then Crystal's, that's Crystal's Jeep. The light switch right behind you. Got it. This is my officer's car. This is an officer's <laughs> car right here. This is a, no, but that's, a, that's my, that's, I bought a Corvette. Nice. <laughs> this is my Corvette. It won't get out till next spring, so I hope I'll uncover it, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so this is a 1942 Ford Jeep. So when Uncle Sam was going to replace the motorcycle and the horse, they put out bids for a four-wheel drive something. And Bantam, Ford, and Willis all came in with prototypes. Willis eventually won, probably because of the 60 horsepower engine as opposed to the 40 horsepower in the Ford. So Uncle Sam said to Ford, okay, Willis only has one plant. If they get sabotaged, we lose all of our production. We'll get Henry Ford, we'll get you to build them because you have three plants that you can use. And Henry Ford said very begrudgingly, yes, I will, because he just lost the bid. Well, what they did was all of the parts on this Ford interchange with all the parts on the Willis. Mm. But they're either marked with an F, or they, they're made just a little different. Mm. So like this cross member right here, on a Willis it's a round tube, but on the Ford it's an inverted U channel. The fender, there's a nice right here, you can see this fender, there's a script F. See that script F stamped right in it? The, the bottom of it being right here. So if you were standing right here, you could see the see a big capital oh, yeah. script out. Everything on this Jeep was script out. All the bolt heads, radiator cap, you name it. It was either built different or it was a script F. And Henry Ford said, well, I want to do that because if I have a warranty issue, I'll know it's a Ford piece that I'm warrantying, not a John Willis truck. And if that Ford Jeep saved the guy's life, when he came home, he's going to buy a Ford and not a Willis. So that, those are the two theories behind it. Probably more towards the latter. Yeah, I'm thinking so, too. Yeah. This is arrogance. What year is it again? So this is a 42. So this was, this was delivered to uh, the government on December 24th, 1942. And we have paperwork where it was actually in Germany, World War II. Nice. And the guy that I got it... The guy that drove it turned it in at the end of the war to the motor pool. He bought it. It went back to Pier 16, New York Harbor, sat there for 30 days in quarantine. Then it went to Connecticut where they lived. Then they moved to Belmont, which is over near Belfast. And he passed away in 92. The neighbor bought it that fall, and I bought it from the neighbor in the spring of 93. Nice. Now, this one is, what's the percentage on this one restored? This one I had restored, I restored, and we had it judged last summer in York, Pennsylvania, 98.885%. Wow. Wow. So this one is really, 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 really Providence. Good. So, this is the fourth owner. But, and what was the flaws on this one, not, not to be 100% restored? I didn't fix the radiator tank. It's a Ford Mark tank, and I didn't want them to take it apart. To, to fix it and then screw it up, you know, take the chance. So I said, no, that's good. Um, oh, there were stupid things. Like, this, I had the carburetors, a new rebuilt carburetor, show carburetor. The judges looked at it, they go, oh, that linkage? It's too shiny. <laughs> it's too shiny? So okay. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. And, uh. So you got yeah. like all the proper hose clamps and everything else on it? Yes, yes. 
Yeah. Oh, and that was one of the things, too. They said, oh, you don't have the Ford oil lines. No. You can't buy Ford oil lines. Okay, I understand that. But that was, I mean, they got to that level of picking at it. I had a judge a year ago, and we got 96%, and that kind of made me mad because it was, I really strive to do. They picked out things like all the bolt heads, like all these bolt heads have an a script F cast into them. So while I'm putting it together, I lined them all up. You know, lined oh. them all up. Oh, no, they would never do that at the factory. Oh. Really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so they took some points off of that. Oh, and man. Wow. Yeah. Taking points off because you have OCD. That's pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I feel, your, I feel your pain. Please. Yeah. 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 So this one is just six volt. This one's just your typical six volt Jeep. Um, being World War II, I don't know. But all the, the headlights on the Jeep pivot. Uh -huh. So you could work on the carburetor oh, and the fuel that. pump, or you could flip that one up and work on the starter and the generator. Oh, uh, <laughs> we can use that now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know whose idea that was? By any chance? Is that is that a Ford only thing? Do you know? No, it's on it's on the Willis it too. Okay. But I don't know who. I'm just curious. That's pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I don't know. That's a good question. I'm going to look that up. Sorry. I don't know who had that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they all had that or not. That's pretty. The neat. prototypes, but yeah, so yeah. Someone's got to take credit for that. Yeah. Right. Oh, you bet they will. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the gas tank cap is under the driver's seat cushion. That's the filler. Is under Sa there. Safest place for it, right? Yes, <laughs> Safest safe place for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then the Jeep behind is uh, 51 M38. So I restored that one. Well, I probably finished that one six years ago now. And that's like the other two that we were looking at over there. So this is all 24 volt. This is all waterproof ignition. So what they've done is the spark plug wires screw to the distributor cap. They screw to the plugs. All this tubing that you see through here is all for the porting stuff. So there's a knob in the dash, and when you pull it, it closes this valve and that valve down there, and it pressurizes the master cylinder, the bell housing, transmission transfer case. So as long as the snorkel, as long as this is out of the water, it'll run. And then if, obviously, you put a snorkel on up here, it would stay running. When I had this one judged, the last time we had it judged six years ago, uh, 99.65. Wow. So that's good stuff. And this one, the, the two things that they dinged me on, and I didn't care, um, the the engines are stamped, like all of them, they're all stamped. So when they built the prototypes, the prototype Willis was an MA. The typical World War II Jeep was MB, that was a second series. M38 is MC. So these engines would have MC stamped on the water pump boss. When they changed them out, replaced them, they put an R, they stamp an R in front of the MC. So it's replaced or rebuilt. So this has an R MC. Well, it came with the Jeep. It's the correct engine. It might not be a matching number, but it's the correct engine. So I said, that's good enough. I, I'll, I'll take the hit because I know it. Hmm. And then on the speedometer, the gauge face is plastic, clear plastic, and the needles are painted with iridium to make them shine in the dark. Well, when they sit out to the sun, the sun draws the iridium through the plastic and it cracks it from the back side. So, the original speedometer had like 19,000 miles on it. Don't care. Take, I'll take the hit. And what percentage is that, Jeep? This was 99.65. Yep. I'm surprised they dinged you on the water pump, even though it's a, it's a correct Because, But it's not factory. But wasn't it a correct well, replacement, though? It's, but, but see, that's the problem. It's, it's a replacement. It didn't come out the factory door with a replaced engine in it. Somewhere in its life, it got the engine changed. Even though it's a correct replacement, it's not right. a factory. Right, right. So when we judge Jeeps, 
because I, I do the judging too. Yep. We have a class called motor pool. So that would be correct for a motor pool. Okay. Yep. If somebody put a CJ2A engine in it, that wouldn't be correct. But motor pool is anything like the engine that would have been correct. Yeah, I see. But factory, it has to be just as it rolled off the assembly line. Just shows you how picky the judges yeah. are when they're, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. So, and just, it's not even a Jeep story, but the, the speedometer made me think of it. One of my friends up in Canada has a weasel, like the one over here, all restored. Nice. They brought it down to one of the shows. They stopped at the border like they're supposed to. And... They pulled him off to the side and says, yeah, we have a problem with your, whatever is in your trailer because we're getting a radioactive reading. <laughs> and he says, okay. So they had scanned his trailer, his enclosed trailer from the outside. And they went in the trailer with a hand scanner and they go, oh, yeah, it's just your speedometer. Interesting. So that's how picky or how accurate that equipment is they use they picked up the radioactivity coming off from his speedometer wow. inside an enclosed trailer wow. New Hampshire State Police I don't know they still do or not but back probably about 14 years ago they used to carry those in their car and they stopped the vehicle on uh, I don't know what the highway is it goes down of course much it's over but they stopped the vehicles because it set off their monitor in their in their vehicle and they had to get people out there and go over the... As he was going by them. Wow. And it was probably nothing more than like a speedometer or something yeah. stupid. But. That, that was my forte. I worked in radiological control, and those those units are extremely sensitive. Extremely they have to be. They would just have to be. Yeah. Yeah. Stories wow. of people going to the border that just got chemo setting them off. Yep. Really? Really? We have to give our veterans letters. We, uh, when we tests. had people that had... That had you know uh, testing at the hospital with isotope. Uh, they had to they had to go up to the medical clinic and they had to get scanned and scanned and scanned every you know every week or so until there was no reading on them before they could go back into radiological work because they have to go through a control point and frisk out. And they'd set off the alarm on the friskers before they even reached the control point. Wow. If they didn't, you know. Oh, my word. And we had, we had people that were numb enough not to tell anybody yeah. about it, you know. And they'd actually go into the compartment, and that would, you know, set off all kinds of alarms. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. But, I mean, to be that sensitive oh, yeah. is just, just crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And then this truck right behind you is a 1940 Plymouth pickup truck. And they made about 6,000 of them in 1940, and two-wheel drive, still has a six-cylinder flathead engine, and uh, it was actually in the military, and what they did, the truck was green like that brake backing plate, you run the other side, that bright green, with black running boards, and what they did was they took the hood off, they masked out the engine compartment, they took the hubcaps off, and then everything they could see, they sprayed all of drab. So when you put the hood up, it was still that bright green. <laughs> when you looked under the cab or under the pickup bed, it was still the bright green because you couldn't see it standing here just spraying. So if you looked up inside the fenders this way, they would be black. So if I get to it, that's how I'm going to restore it. I'm going to restore it right back to that paint configuration because it has a uh, Hand stencil USA registration numbers on the hood, uh, unit markings U.S. Army on the tailgate. So, so yeah, so that's going to be a, and it was still had the chrome down the hood and across the the grill, and it's got Plymouth and in script, chrome oh, the script split window and, too. Mm. Yeah, the rear window and the rear window has uh, four welded nuts, two top, two bottom for a brush guard. Uh -huh. So I mean that was a military thing. It wasn't civilian by any means. So, uh, yeah. So there, and then this chassis right here is That's my shin protector that just fell. Oh. <laughs> I, put a, I put a soda bottle right over this. Oh, right here. Over here. Oh, yes. Good idea. Just like that. There. So this is 1941. So this one is going to look just like Pisu, 
And this Jeep, when I bought pea soup, or what is now pea soup, there were all kinds of brass tags on it. Tag on the engine, transmission, transfer, front end, rear end, and the tub, saying that it had been through a government rebuild in 1945 in Modesto, California. So what they did with these Jeeps is they would take all these wrecked Jeeps, and they would have a few acres and acres of wrecked Jeeps. And then they would have a factory, it might be a mile long. And they'd say, okay, go bring in a Jeep. So they'd drag a Jeep in, and they'd start disassembling it. And every point, they took off certain pieces until they got to the end when it was just a bare frame. Everything they took off that they could reuse, they rebuilt it. The pieces that were junk, out the door. So Ford and Willis, where the parts were interchangeable a lot like Chevrolet GMC pickups. Even though they looked different, everything bolted together. So when they started building the Jeep, they'd say, get me a frame. And they didn't care if it was a Ford or a Willis frame. Go get me springs. They didn't care if it was four of one or three and one or two and two. They wanted four springs. So when they come out the other end, they had a Jeep. But it was a conglomeration of mongrel. Ford. Yeah, mongrel Jeep. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Motor pool. Yeah, motor pool Jeep is what it would have been. Yeah. So that's what my forty my pea soup was, was one of those. Yeah. So when I took pea soup apart, the, it had the very early body on it. Or when I took this Jeep apart that had been through the rebuild, it had a very early body on it. Everything else was Ford. So I said, well, I'm going to take that body and I'm going to build a factory 1941 Jeep out of it. So in 92, all I had was the tub. So from 92 to 2012, I collect, I correct, collected the right frame, the right front end, the right rear end, the right springs, the right end. So this is all correct for December 1941. So as soon as I get the body done, there's the grill. Yep. Everything that bolts, practically everything else is painted ready to put together. Nice. But this is a 41. And it's got the little tractor muffler on it instead of the oval muffler. And, but that's factory. Mm -hmm. And has the, so this has solid, they solid refer to wheels. these solid disc wheels. The typical Jeep has combat wheels, they're bolt together mm -hmm. rim. So these are all, that's all correct for. How hard is it to find parts for that? Really hard now. Yeah. Really, really hard. You can. I'm a purist at heart, so everything <laughs> I put on it, I want it original. Yeah. If I have to put something in reproduction, I will, but I really don't want yeah, to. No. So, like hoses and spark plug wires and wiring harness, that type of stuff. Yeah, that's. You, it's got to be new. Brake stuff, all has to be yeah, new. new all stuff going by. But all the metal, all the sheet metal stuff. Yeah, I'll I'll chase down the the hard to find stuff. Just because it's what I want. It's like Crystal's Jeep, this Jeep here. I don't think there's a reproduction, other than wear items, I don't think there's a reproduction piece on it. Nice. Wow. That's amazing. The attention to detail and. Oh, it just gets worse. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, sure. You know, you did this nice on this one, you should be able to do better on that one, you should be able to do better on the next one. An internal <laughs> struggle. Oh my God. Trick pattern. Yes, and see the difference between uh, Goodyear and Firestone. So, and again, the judges look for that. Mm -hmm. if, you know, if you got the wrong tire brand on there, okay, mm -hmm. well, it's the right tread, but they didn't have specialty tires, so you get the thing on that. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, this year I did, next year I won't. <laughs> <laughs> you feel teach them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can take you down in yeah. one more room, yeah. one more building. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. So then, this is just another M38A1 Korean era. Uh, that's a civilian trailer. So the only difference with the civilian trailer is that it had a tailgate to fold it down. All the military stuff they were fixed. Uh, the Jeep in the corner on the right there. That is a 50 CJV35U. So technically, it's a prototype for the M38 Jeep. It's six volt waterproof. Hmm. So they were using a lot of CJ3A and uh, 2A and MB GPW stuff. 
and stuff that we now look at like M38. And they built a thousand of them, and they were used by the Marine Corps as a radio jeep. Hmm. And then that red tank, if you flip it, now you flip it towards the garage door here, that's the rear flotation tank for the weasel. Because it would float. So that and that had rudders on the back of it. And then this is the front flotation tank. So this is the top. So it looked like a bow of a boat. So they had a front flotation tank on them. And then we go in here. This is this is where all the fun happens. Not much to look at. It's so fun at all. Yeah, there's more of them in here. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. And this is where it all takes place, right here. Yep. Smells like a, recently a body shop. <laughs> yeah, well, I've been, yeah, it's, <laughs> it was storage for a long time, and then it turned into restoration stuff. So this is the floor for the half track. This is the rear. So the passenger seat would be right here. The driver's seat would be right there. And the troops would pass through here. And there were cushions. Cushions right here. And then the gas tank sat right here. So they would lean up against the gas tank. And what's really weird about the design of this thing is it didn't have a back door. So the only way you could get in was over the sides or out through over the seats and out the door. Which they did change it on the next series. They put doors in it or a door in the back. But uh, yeah, so this I'm trying to get square because this, well, you can see how bad that piece of steel is right there. Well, this one was almost as bad. And these are the bumpers. These would these bolt down here. That's the rear bumper. So I gotta get that squared away so that I can get it back on. I want to get it on the half track because then the armor goes on. Then it looks like a half track. Then it'll look like a half track. Now, do you have a hard time getting the technical work documents to be able to restore this stuff? You know, to no, the uh, manuals are available. Most, I mean, you can get almost every manual for all these vehicles. Um, and there are a lot of guys in the hobby that have done lots of homework yeah. and, and uh, written it down. It's available, in, you know, thank God for the Internet. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you can get all that information. Some of it good, some of it not so good. But, but you can get pots. They make almost everything here. They make reproduction. Hmm. But again, I don't want reproduction. I want the real thing. You know? Right. So, but no, it's all all available, and it's just how deep your pockets are, you know, and how fast you. If you don't, if you're not in a hurry, you can chase it and find it for cheap. But if you want it tomorrow, yeah, you can still get it tomorrow. It's just going to cost you a fortune. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And then this is my current project. So this is a it's just a World War II Jeep trailer. But this trailer was pitted just from one end. I mean, just pitted. Nothing. There wasn't a square inch on it that didn't have pits on it. Uh, fill and sand, fill and sand, fill and sand. And I built this rotisserie. <laughs> so it, I can turn it. And I, I can, you know, front with backwards. I can lift it up. I can lower it. I've had Jeep bodies on here. I've had the command car body on here. This is a lifesaver. Wow. And all it is, two engine hoists. Oh, wow. That's all I did was just reconfigure, because there's your jack. Yep. This would have been the arm, right? This, this much of it would have been the arm that was out. Yep. So we just turned things around and <laughs> snowmobile trailer tires and spin them. Yeah, spin them off my Jeep. <laughs> oh yeah, and, uh, and you just it comes apart right here. So this is constant, and then this I bolt to whatever I'm working on, Jeep frame or Jeep body or mm -hmm. command car or. But yeah, that'll wow, right around 360 degrees. <laughs> and then this is the necessity, the mother of invention. This is the Jeep. This is my 41. So this goes on the chassis that was up in the other building. Yep. Uh, and. 
We used it for five or six years, and it had patches on patches. Everything was pop riveted from you know back in the 80s. So four or five years ago, I said, I'm going to get going on this. I dig it out, and it's like, who put all these freaking patches on here? Well, it was me. <laughs> it was. It's like, holy crap. Did a good job. The dash was full of bolts and, and uh, machine screws. It was like, what was that? And it was, I was just filling holes so I could paint it, and it would look okay. But not anymore. Yeah. Not anymore. So, so I've, got, uh, I've got to put a new rear panel on this. I've got to put new floors, new gas tanks on. But the half track got in my way. That was <laughs> why this is in the corner. Yeah. Awesome. Wow. So, yeah. So, yeah. Joe, thank you very much for showing us. Oh, your, uh, you're welcome. I'm glad you guys came yeah, over. Yeah, I know. Very entertaining. Cool. <laughs> Good. You should <laughs> charge money at the door or something. Absolutely. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, so if you guys find any flat fender, anything, cheap, dodges, let me know, because I'm always buying stuff, okay. working on it, selling it to somebody else, or okay. people are always looking for Jeeps and trailers, and oh, yeah. Yeah. small I think, stuff. I think that tastes awesome. Well, that was amazing, the visit to that older fellow here in, um, I can't say where, got some amazing old stuff, the wealth of information, guided tour. That's, that's some good stuff right there. So we're just leaving Joe's place and let me tell you that stuff was amazing. I usually don't get into a lot of the older builds and that was so interesting. Really, really cool. This is 